He comes to the tank now, now. Oh, he's driven straight into the tank. He's driven straight. Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. That's the pain of Mikul Zavik Mil. <laughs> this, is, this is brutal. <laughs> this is against the Geneva Convention, I think. Just try to crash into him. He's just knocking the tank around. Hey, we need to kill the tiger. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. He doesn't check. 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 He doesn't Good evening and welcome to week four of the 23 winter seasonal. I'm Eats While Playing. Tonight I'm joined by Mr. Milk. Hello. And Sasquatch. Hello. Uh, good evening. This is the week of free Harkovs. Tonight we have Greyhounds versus Broken Arrow. Very interesting toss up we've got here. Um, so, yes, tell us about Harkov Milk. Ah, oh, see, Harkov for me, one of the ones that. Love watching. Bloody hate playing, though. Do try and avoid it when I can, but it's been a really enjoyable game to watch, to be fair. Got a strong team on the Allies' side. But I like to see the underdogs are real on the Axis, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree, I couldn't agree more, though, Milk, actually. Um, but yeah, looking towards sort of like the middle of the map, um, I feel like there's quite a, quite a str strong sway towards the Allies in terms of that initial cap, and I think that's going to dictate a lot of the early game, that first 20 minutes, and yeah, just it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from there. Yeah, it's like a nice game. So it's like a can't really say much to see the points really. But. Mm. It's very different points. In the west, you've got far more open ground around the water mill. Distillery is similar to the town, just not as built up. But it's certainly more of an urban fight in the east, isn't it? I'm praying we get a uh, Saint Mary. I won't lie to you. Yeah, mm. I think that'd be the most fun to watch. Other than that, distillery following that. Just because we got the mix of, I think the city is the best one, most even ground. To be fair, we've got the close quarters of the buildings, but you also got some open ground with them tank battles as well. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd really agree with that. Just in terms of like splitting those three central points up into well, three distinct sort of um, key areas in the game. In terms of watermill being that that key tank fighting fighting area. In terms of yeah, the tanks will really dictate what happens there, and obviously. Um, yeah, with the IS-2 being on the field and the Tiger, both sort of obviously heavy tanks, but then with, in my personal opinion, the IS-2 taking that sort of better tank position, it'll be interesting to see if we do get w w Watermill, what kind of happens in that tank battle. And then as we move into St. Mary, sort of that more infantry fighting that Milk was speaking about just then. And yeah, just could be a lovely back and forth between satch lots of satchels, PPSHs on the Russian side, and then the Germans you know, just trying to do whatever they can to to win that infantry battle when I would say they probably have a bit of a disadvantage. Um, and then moving over to distillery, I think there's there's quite a nice mix of that combined arms where both tanks and infantry will be doing, well, all of the work, obviously, but like 
real success to a distillery is that combined arms of pushing with your tanks, making sure you've got cover across yeah. the map. You got them good iron flanking angles as well on the distillery. Yeah, yeah. You also got that like the good hard cover when you go like the house to house grind. You'll see mm. makes the PPSH will shine there. To be fair, but I'm hoping yeah. to see some very nice satchels on house to house clearing. Possibly. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the one place the Soviets have the advantages at the short range with the PPSH. Mm. They have a bit of a middle distance problem with their weaponry. You're stuck between a bolt action and a PPSH, which so there's no happy medium ground with like the Gewehr mm. of the, the Axis that they have to exploit that. Yeah. Although we yeah. might burn against PPSH. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think it's good to sort of mention probably the SVT in, in the Russian lineup, just in terms of that really, really strong semi automatic. Um, yeah. Squad yeah, leaders' right the... support need to be utilising that. As the yeah, yeah, you know. you'll probably, yeah, you'll you'll see that probably a lot more often um, in this game, especially on that Russian side. Just yeah, with with it being locked. You only get well. isn't only two rolls of the uh, yeah, Russian two, just two have rolls. Them. I think get them. Awesome support, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, will be will be really interesting to see. And well, it's one of these maps where I feel like the amount of preparation done will really determine a lot as well. Obviously, 100%. yeah. Both teams, seasoned veterans, um, both really know what they're doing. So expect to see lots of eighty gun positions, lots of yeah, mm. as we see yeah, all the time nowadays in comp, which is big oh. clusters of repair stations. And yeah, just expect to see that. The Greyhounds, in particular, are known for their prep and their rollouts. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See it. In the last fifteen games, we lost two of them, haven't we? Mm. Yeah, they've Be been friendly, isn't that's it. But then, yeah, don't uh, never, never, never put down Broken Arrow in terms of how strong they can be, especially in that frontline gameplay. Yeah, we saw it against the eighty second. Sadly, of course, they lost, but it really gave um, eighty second a good fight for a large majority of that game. And I don't think, yeah, although they did lose, like they're not they're not out for the count just yet, and they're going to be wanting to keep themselves in this tournament. Yeah, definitely. I'm hoping to see some uh, interesting, hopefully. Tank snipes or 80 guns at the start, maybe. Oh, yeah. Especially because you've got that hill on the Allies side in the Marsh Town, on top of there. But... Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on the tank. Yeah, none of us are tankers, are we? So we're going to have oh. to oh, no. try and well, not good. Not try good keep tank, our eyes maybe. open. Put me in a tank and I screamed most of it, so. Yeah, no, absolutely. How are we feeling about the early medium battle then? Is it going to be a well, bit of a. So you think the IS-1 has the, the odds on the Tiger? Does does the T-34 have a, any advantage on the Panzer IV? I think they need a tanker in this truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably say, I would probably say, obviously, say obviously, the Russians <laughs> will have... <laughs> yeah, um, the Russians will have a bit of a... Just personally, I feel like the Russians do have that advantage, that sloped armour. We hear about it all the time. You do get those ricochets more likely to happen with those Russian tanks. And you usually do see the T-34 coming off better than the P-4. Um, but yeah, then when looking at going into the, the recon tanks and the, the light tanks, as they will be really utilized early on, I do, you have to admit, I do, I do quite like the how the Lux can be used to really get those infantry pushing and to really clear out um, stubborn enemy positions. Oh, the teams are filtering in now. It shouldn't be too long. Yeah, I think I think the T thirty four does beat the P four in terms of just like you rank it up next to each other, just because that slow armor. I think because uh, you can. I think the way you can angle that T thirty four, isn't it? The armor to the side makes yeah. it harder for the P four to penetrate it. But then, obviously, they're slow. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you've got the, then you've got the AT difference, don't you? Obviously, there's, mm, yeah. well, the Russians for a long time were out, were, were without a tube, so no Panzerstreck or Bazooka, but obviously they've got that now. And yeah, even though they do have that, they will really, um, really struggle compared to that of the, the Panzerstreck um, going into this one. But see round points such as St. Mary and Distillery, those sort of infantry Infantry duels with tanks will be a lot more effective than, let's say, Watermill, where it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a massacre on either, either side. Yeah, definitely. In terms of names and stuff, when you 
Yeah, you know, if you're looking out for, I'm yeah. not personally familiar with either team, so. Well, they're both pretty strong throughout the roster, I think. It's names such as uh, Feet Tony, uh, I've noticed Muck Snapper. Mm. Particularly standing out as uh, names in the scene, but uh, it's going to be a very good fight either way this tonight. On a very unorthodox map, I'm looking forward to it. And you say we hope the point is St. Mary, the uh, sacred church in the centre here. The fight in the west is much more open, much more tank dominated. And then distillery in the east. Mm, a bit of a mix of both strong Soviet positions here on these windmills, but uh, the Germans do have places to get in. So it's going to be interesting to see which midpoint it is. Mm. I think it's worth saying as well, like we've we've seen across this tournament, across all of, like all of the seasonals, part both past and present, that artillery with its new rule set, obviously one gun. Yeah. Um, that really, yeah, having having an RT man who can who can really dictate that game is obviously quite important, and especially in 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 points such as Watermill, and I would even say Distillery, less so St Mary because of the building presence that's there, and there's a lot less opportunity for complete squad wipes with artillery. Um, yeah. The RT man on either side can really dictate how that's gonna how that's gonna play out. Yeah, there's very obvious lanes on St Mary and Distillery, sort of lanes for the infantry to come in, which makes it very obvious where to shell. Hmm. The church itself can be a satchel's paradise. A satchel on one yeah, wall absolutely. can wipe people on the opposite side. So yeah, it's St Mary definitely the point we'd we'd like to see as neutral. Yeah, sorry, so. Your stream quality for me, I can't seem to... It's very fuzzy, can't make out anything really. Uh, one minute. Not sure there's anything you could do about that. Not really, no. No, you're just going to have to go with it, I'm afraid. No worries. That's all good. That's the best distro Discord Nitro can give. <laughs> So we're up to 97 players in the server, we shouldn't be too long before we get started now. But yeah, it's going to be really, really great to see the overall tank game, I feel like it's going to be, yeah. Quite a, quite a fierce battle at the start, especially with yeah. as we were talking about earlier that T thirty four rolling up, prob probably having the advantage on the P four. But you never know. Um, tankers can be caught sleeping every so often, um, um, and yeah, it'll be it'll be a good 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 battle to observe. Yeah, yeah, definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be an interesting rollout. Mm. And obviously, with the the Russians not being played as much. And well, with um, the the introduction more recently with the 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 light um, the light tank that the Russians have got, seeing how teams utilise that with it being more of a, a Stuart based role, with it I would say probably being a, t a tad quicker, um, yeah, and how that can kind of be utilised um, utilised in this environment, as previously when comp games being on Kursk, um, Stalingrad, no matter how rare they are, they haven't had them really in the past to see how, how they work. Yeah. Well, just to see the Russians in action tonight, it's going to be something a bit different. It would be great to see all three games, um, seeing different point layouts as well, see how they play out and see uh, what teams get the advance. Yeah. Well, shenanigans are occurring at the HQs. So we're waiting for the the last few to roll in.
yeah, as, as as we're sort of hovering over distillery now, you can kind of see those those lines of those lines of movement that we were talking about earlier. That East was bringing up about the the, the artillery and how they can really dictate sort yeah. of overall movements. Map is very very telegraphed, isn't it? Um, can really tell when someone's coming from somewhere. Yeah, I would say say obviously the difference in that is obviously Saint Mary. That can offer a lot. Like we've benefited in the past in some of our previous comp games of stray stray squad leaders being able to really get a foot in and a foothold in some of the back lines and then requiring a lot of effort from the defensive teams to really clear them out because obviously there's a lot of hiding spots, there's a lot of places to move and yeah, it can be quite difficult for those defenders if you get people in those back lines really causing havoc. Yeah. So behind mm. here for the, the Russians and then the Germans sneaking around here. But it's like for you, it's there's so few places infantry can move without being spotted that tank and artillery just love it. Yeah, exactly. But that can always lead to the odd odd backline tank satchel. We saw it earlier today, for example, um, with yeah, with some of the comp games that were being played. Lots of SLs really bringing in and shifting weight to dictate 80s and satchel satchel boys to really yeah harass the backline and try and get whatever they can to really ease up that frontline push that, that comes mm. from yeah. stacking heavy armour, of which both teams have to be really careful. Uh, that's, that's another thing. I don't understand why it's hard to only this week. So. Mm. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it's going to make for some interesting viewing, for sure. Crazy people. Yeah. We've yeah. we've all seen a game on St. Mary Glees. It's nice to, nice to switch it up. Although, preferably not switch it to Stalingrad, as that, that always causes issues. <laughs> Well, I've seen an 18s game on Stalingrad this week. It seemed pretty one-sided. The the Germans having much better time of it than the the Russians on it. But we shall see. Yeah. Look, you were speaking about earlier how how this 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 map's a bit sort of one-sided. Well, in the middle, you've obviously got a lot of favourable hard caps for the Russians. Would you say there's anywhere else on the map that you would? I was, I was saying the one side before earlier, but like thinking about especially the other maps you got for the, the Russians, like Stalingrad and Bursk, it's actually the most even, I think. I think, you know? yeah, it's, like, it is the most even of the Russian maps, well, yeah. It's point dependent now, like water, I think, German, a little bit German favoured, just like the longer range battles that can happen. And then Anywhere close quarters, really, the PPSH can bring the, the allies back into the fight. Yeah. Well, we're at 100 players, so we should be flipping anytime soon. There we go. Right on cue. And just, just to finish off that notion, obviously there's one point of which the Russians don't want, that being bitter, sp bitter, uh, bitter Spring, with its open ground, very little cover, relying heavily on tanks, and if... if um, the Greyhounds are pushed back to that point. See, so, yeah, a real struggle for them just to to really hold it because yeah. tank domination. You don't even need an extra heavy just because infantry is very, very little room mm. to move. But then, obviously, it's quite hard to push as well. Yeah, the Germans definitely with the advantage over the longer range with infantry as well. We shall see in a little over twenty seconds. Here we go. I am, of course, a very slow loader. <laughs> and it is distillery with mostly center points. Mm. Just need to find uh, the squad to join. Be a good fight. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Just in terms of that that zigzag from that central city all the way to distillery, it means there's going to be lots of ground to cover. Right, there's going to be a real push to. Although Saint Mary obviously out of sector for distillery, there's going to be a lot of incentives to to keep that central point and obviously MG positions up in the church. Although 
aren't always perfect. They'll be able to really provide quite in-depth arcs of fire. Yeah. Rollout's going to be important. Both yeah, absolutely. sides get kind of 50-50. The Germans are pushed wider on the eastern flank, but one or two arty snipes, one or two moments here could change things. And we have distillery. Now, well, this does mean that that large hill in the northwest is less useful to the Soviets as the battle will be on this eastern side. But yeah. Both teams having diagonal second points to work with as well, which is going to make the fighting in the town all the more important. It's, uh, it's a good toss-up here. Yeah, lots of ground to cover. <laughs> I don't envy them at all. I feel the scenery can get like Got the good flanking angles as well for that hard mm. cap itself. So we've got the buildings on the column either side, and then because it's like that line of building going north to south, you're going to have that good close quarter combat. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where this early armor goes as well. So if we can try and get, do we have a, a visual on the T a T34 where it's where it's setting up? See the Greyhounds infantry there. We'll flip over and mm. have a look at the. Tanks are moving in, T-34 is coming around the centre now. Good, uh, two recon tanks heading out on the flanks. Two Pumas for BA. Mm -hmm. It's 30 seconds till we go, but uh, yeah, we've got a good rollout across the line from BA and from the Greyhounds. 20 seconds. Just loading in the trucks there. And yeah, off we go. You see the Greyhound trucks rolling in there. Is that a Lux? I think that's a Lux with them there. Not Lux, sorry, I'm talking. It's a T-17. <laughs> Are there any uh, rocket snipes yet? Not that I can see. The RT has started. Yeah, it would be interesting to see where that RT starts to fall, really. See where, where the teams want to dedicate the majority of their resources. Yeah. Oh, you see the first arty shells landing? Yep. Tank shell on the hard cap from the T-70, I believe. Lux has arrived. Wrong mm, right it. there. Lux. Yeah, as we had the double Lux play. That's a lot of red weight there. Yeah. Double mm. Lux coming in. Oh, I was yeah. overwhelming that left front. We're now seeing a lot of that blue though in that top right as trying to really yeah, secure yeah. themselves in the hard cap. But as we were kind of saying earlier, distillery not a great point for the Germans to really push it's into. Just, yeah. Mm. The second they get pushed out of them buildings and that compound, got to cross that open field to get back in. Yeah, exactly. But saying that though, you can see, you can really see the Germans putting a lot of pressure into that central city area yeah. and really wanting to secure it early on. Lost the squad leader in the east. So they've got a couple of OPs up in the halfway through the cap, the Greyhounds. Sheer infantry pressure in the middle. Even though they weren't completely capital distillery, they were putting away to the north of Belgrade. They've already got that middle flank covered now. Mm. Yeah, not the wrong game. Yeah, not, not the worst case scenario here for... They've obviously got a plan to secure that south. Yeah. Mm. Is, is the is the Panzer IV still up? Are we, uh, we could... It is still back on that garrison there. Okay, nice. They're conserving that Sorry. there. And... And the 
Movement is going to flip Greyhounds, BHP, uh, Broken Arrow rather, having to reset here. Already a small cap turning on Belgorod, but it's, uh, it's going to be set to pressure. Mm. Just that frontline push from Centenary. Oh no, there you go. Oh, There's a big one, nothing. Them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even with that real strong presence on St. Mary, they're, they're struggling to go as wide as they probably need to be. Being, yeah. Got two. Being, being yeah, Grau's got two squad leads on the west side. Mm -hmm. of the I don't see any urgent. It's a good foothold they've got still on Distillery Greyhound, so... I'm not even sure they're aware they're there. <laughs> they're getting contested again, they will know. He's getting far behind that point. If you put Snow P yeah. down, just six men in the half cap, basically. Really. Just needs to be patient there, but. Frontline still exists in the town. Yeah, quite messy as you as you really do expect. Greyhound control on the hard cap there. Just force the, the broken arrow line back to this line here. Hmm. But this is what, well, we saw in the 82nd game at least, um, the Broken Arrow really do know how to hold this structural front line, and even yeah. if they're pushed in certain areas, you see that ebb and flow of the front line that really can, yeah. At the same time, they have a lot of weight in that St. Mary, the four sectors there. Oh, and the cap has yeah. started. Cap started. Mm, they know about it there. On the, on the central point as well. Is that just soft pressure from the south? It will be a Greyhound's probably moving weight. Let's have a look. That cap stopped now. Yeah, it's a little breakthrough on the right there, but Greyhound's still in control just about here. Yeah, they're, they're, they must be throwing weights elsewhere. It's seeing a lot less red. Mm. They don't want to risk giving up Bogor yet. Yep, yeah, no, not at all. You've got the four there as well, and more for the pushing down the south. No, the cap has restarted. So what, while they have control of St. Mary, they haven't got control. They've, they've well, got a good frontline Gary structure, but they're in behind it, and it's, yeah. It's, mm. I don't there's another squad lead there. I think that's pretty good point for them. Yeah, they really need to snuff this out early. They've not got men, um, men going back. Oh, once again, capping mid. Hmm. They yeah, are starting to make progress it. now. That's a really great push in those houses. Yeah, right on the edge of the map here. Leonidas' squad. And the mm. squad. Like I said before, it's like they've got some good point angles in that point. Mm. But can they do yeah, this here time? They, they've got people coming back now, you, we're, we're seeing this. and Yeah, Gary's up. And that's yes. one of those different. Sorry. So that's because I said they can get control down. They've got that Southern Gary back up, but. It's good they didn't all come back. Like, they still got that frontline pressure going as well. Yeah. Especially that bottom left of the fittery. Got a whole bunch of blue there. But they're all put off in that one house. Could come across it. That looks a lot there. Ah, I think we're getting snuffed out on the right side. Yeah, it's great to see though. Nice back and forth though. But this is where we, we really see the disadvantage of having one of these larger hard cap circles, especially with Belgrod. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if, if it was bitter spring is that you can you can really jump back in quite quite quickly in terms of defensively, but if the enemy team start pumping infantry into that circle, they get a lot of hard cap pressure quite quickly. And obviously a lot harder to find as it's so big and yeah, with all the buildings around Belgrade it's going to be quite a hard. Yeah, they can snuff down on the right hand side yeah. completely now. But then they've given up that ground for the left. So while they take one area, they have to lose the next. That's the looks that was causing trouble there. Because they have that pressure in certain area as well, they can push this to do on the left hand side. Has he got a... Mm -hmm. 
We well, can at least contest it. The church is still contested though. They've still got this little flank over here that can. You still got a whole squad of presence in Belgrade, which is the issue. Yeah. Well, they have got a better mm. network up to deal with it now. But this is where we see the first heavy come rolling in. Yeah, but that one, uh, that one squad attacking Belgrade allowed the other squad from uh, bottom left of St. Mary's sector to come into play as well. Yeah, really important here that they don't lose this tiger very early, early on. Yeah. Mm. Oh, you uh, see the AT, yeah, can yeah, we, yeah. we zoom in on that if they get a, get a satchel on it? Or is he here? Oh, that's... Tiger, they're very blasé from the Tiger there. He gets an engineer on that AP, that's gone. Yep, that's... engine down. You, you okay. really fear the, you fear the worst now, don't you? Oh, getting out. Yeah. Take the black! In bandit country. They'll probably be screaming for their infantry in there. Mm, really, yeah. yeah, really need those calls from, from command chat dictating, yeah, it's not okay to come here. We really need you not to not to throw the the armor straight down the middle. Be a bit more cautious. Oh, they may get cleared up here. You got mm. option an easy squad pressure from the south. Units come in and taking care of these. Mm. Just in for the Have their OP been locked yet? Or is the Greyhound OP still there? It's still there, right? We're getting from this shenanigans though, their front lines must have got a bit weaker somewhere. Mm. They brought them back from some place. Mm -hmm. Must have been bold in keeping it there. Just in church, but uh... Yeah, they've lost quite a bit of ground on both those, those left yeah. and right groups here. They were making ground on the left, but back into that one compound that we started from. Still this Greyhound presence moves towards Belgorod. Really good. Yeah. EA lucky of a front line now in Belgrade, which I've never seen before, especially on mm. that left side. The squad needs to come in and, and push back and wipe them, yeah. Really need that concerted effort to let's flush them out, let's really make sure they don't get back in again. Let's stack some armour so we can push onto distillery later on, and if they can do that, and more so with the stacking of the armour, not losing it in any unnecessary ways. If the next 15 minutes start to churn out those tigers, obviously yeah. Greyhounds will be doing the same with IS, um, IS ones. But yeah, that's I feel like going to be the game plan. Try and hold on to what they've got currently and and play for the long game. Rolling in here. Mm. Give the Greyhounds the edge on this eastern flank. They are pushing Broken Arrow right back though in the mid here. Yeah. Right they get pushed out of that house compound, that little column there. It'll be very hard for them to get back in. But they saw that presence in the middle. Solicit mm. 70 Looking for the P4. We've really seen over the past few games, just from a lot a lot of teams, that utilising these lighter tanks with their speed and when you do have the information that you have in these comp games, you can really utilise that speed and power of knocking OPs, knocking garrisons like we're seeing here. It's like quite hard to deal with, especially... especially it's interesting situation right. here. Yeah. Just going out to spot the yeah, that's it on top of it, apparently. Maybe you should go try and block the tower from leaving. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that, can you? Block I think you can make it quite edge. hard. Yeah, you can make it quite hard for the tower to move on top of it. Why are you stuck on the tank of the pole me when they're screaming at me in low huh? Just waiting, just waiting for the T-34 to roll up. Yeah. Oh no, T-34 goes down to Don Vice. Yeah, god, that seems like a huge waste, considering. Hmm. Sadly, yeah, this th Oh no. He's <laughs> this is this is probably gonna be the end for the little tank that could, but um yeah, got on a garage. Oh no, he's he's going, he's, he's going, going, he's going, he's done, he's done, he's done, he's done oh, it. No. <laughs> it's a little drive by. 
to piss him off. Meanwhile, yeah, uh, broken arrow. I've had to shift a lot of weight back here to Belgorod. I think they overestimated the that there. initial the initial breakthrough they had. Although they are still there. Mm -hmm. They got all back. It's not overestimating. And this is where I feel like Broken Arrow, if they're gonna if they're gonna recapture this point, they're gonna need to get a bit better at transferring that weight accordingly to where Greyhounds are doing it, because it does seem like Greyhounds do have the man advantage where they where they're kind of mm. calling the shots. Yeah, again, keeping that tank and that road is always a bit of a risk, especially with the infantry mm. around it. They do have an OP nearby, which is lucky, but... This is the problem with diagonal points, so it's how much weight can you afford to push in this sector here. But... Yeah, because as soon as they give up that right flank, as you see, like, mm. Lobster has lost their position. The uh, Greyhounds can start getting behind them from the east as well. Let's start this one, I can't remember. Saying we really need a concerted effort to to, to push push these greyhound squads out. As surprised they're not capping the point with this much hard hand. Mm. We got tank keeping them in. Yeah. yeah. What's this is what brush looking like in the north? Like in the north of Belgium? Mm. Yeah. Did they bring that back from there? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Mm. But still, a commitment of weight there. there's a lot of red to be in your second point. Yeah. Especially over committing onto that St. Mary area with it not being fully secure as we've, as we're seeing now, it's a bit of, bit of a colander. There's lots of, lots of red filtering through. You see, they're just, they're blocked out of the sector on distillery now, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah those tankers exactly. had to move out of that hard cap, so they're starting to lose it yeah. again. Time to reset for Broken Arrow. They're forcing the uh, nice to stay in the, yeah. the little rows when you get them killed by 80. That's the that garrison needs to survive, and Belos is blocking it right now. Yeah, he's in a smart move, he's not killing it, he's just. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah, that little fight could really dictate what's going to happen there. Yeah, they're, they're bringing it back from the north and east. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 they're fine. Mean, Finally crushing that, they really need to, they've got that weight in St. Mary and it's doing quite well, although, yeah. God, as we're seeing now, they followed them down the road when they pulled out. Yeah, ground's completely rotated around to the middle, I'm going to squeeze them now. Oh, look at that, yeah, they've skeleton crewed on the east. Very good yeah. transfer of weight there, to be fair. Yeah, it's just that allocation of resources that teams, yeah, teams at the top of their game can really, really afford to do is just, yeah, throw infantry where they please and really squad hop to utilize those offensive OPs. Oh, the second they get the second they get that red swarm in the north of Belgrade, that's gonna be a bit nice. hard on the clear out there. Especially because they're, they're maintaining that west side as well. Mm. Yeah and then the north the north squads can't come back because they're being chased. Yeah. Seeing what we was talking about earlier with that that light tank, um, I feel like Broken Arrow could really utilise a Lux just to come in there. Obviously, a bit of a throwaway move. We're not seeing any IS ones. We're not seeing anything that can really one-shot them. So push through, clear out as many OPs they can, so Broken Arrow can really reset and concentrate on that front line because yeah, they've not really had a lull in the last 20 minutes since losing the initial. Cap. They are clearing out the hard cap now. Though. Yeah, but look at that wall from St. Mary. Mm. Still presence out here, but... That front line, it's moved from, from here. Mm. Back down to here now. Yeah, it's going to be a slow push. There's a, there's a recon tank, actually, if we go back to the map quickly. There's a recon tank right on the left of the screen, just... Must be really causing havoc, or trying to do some... Oh, oh I think there's a lot weight over here. Greyhounds here. So it's just mm. Wide flank again, there. Where is that tank on a snipe? I haven't been able to see. Shooting towards Belgorod. Right, see if you can knock that OP possibly. Yeah, yeah. 
fresh wave of greyhounds coming in right across here now. This this is the yeah, problem now. Well, they may be trying to draw them out, then keep pumping that north of it. But yeah, you do have a flank on the north side, but mm -hmm. not too sure get, they need to be able to push down south off that. Mm, we got the church, yeah. Yeah, getting into that territory of, of nearly the third heavy coming out. No team's lost a, lost a heavy thus far, from what we've seen. There's a lot of close score fights happening mm. there, that compound. Mm, That's the PPF data are shine, I think. As you can see, yeah. That's good and wiped. Yeah, and now the, the northern contingent is breaking through to the uh, very helps. Yeah, and that right side as well, they've been cleared out, it looks like. Yeah. It's lost their APs. Oh, no. Be interested to hear your opinions on this, but I've, I'm feeling almost broken arrow in two minds. Do we do we try and keep what we've got currently? Try and keep that offensive option open, whilst almost half half doing the defensive role that they've they've got. Um, yeah, because they're they're kind of a bit here, a bit there at the moment. I feel like they really need to solidify one position or the other. Questionable bombing run, to be fair. Yeah, throwing a lot. Of like, it's a, you don't know where the you don't know where the weight is, especially when it's not in mm. young yeah, sectors. You can't. It's to allow Baker's got time to breathe and get a garrison there, but it's yeah, luckily, unlucky yeah. though. It's all in the in the building compound, so yeah, what's killing, his killing the last killing distillery, but. Yeah, it's the way in the bottom right, yeah. There's two squaddies there, they can get near the half cap. Give a chance to pump weight into their distillery point. Oh, but this is what we this is what we're liking to see a bit more. Obviously frontline's now recovered from those initial penetrations from um Greyhounds, and we're seeing a bit of a wrap at the moment as well. Yeah, mm. BA are holding out. They've got that yeah. flank on the Greyhound push. They could try and yeah. push them back in, push them back out. But yeah, holding the line well. That west side seems to be covered now as well. So once, once they cover that west side, they, can, they know they're coming from that north. And because it's an open field and one column of houses, it's somewhat manageable. Mm. It comes down to who can shoot who. Please. Squads are being very pesky though. Mm. Yeah, but it, again, it's the whole that they will cross that giant field, will go through yeah. eight, nine BA members just there in that road. Right. And they're making ground again in that the housing con. Yeah, and in the east here. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit, bit worrying about that push in the east because sadly, yeah, crossfires from where, where that central, where, we, where we're staring at the moment, just west of that, that trench line, the crossfires can be, yeah, kill that off pretty quickly. It seems like Greyhounds are bringing more back to defend, though. Mm -hmm. I think they've realised. Yeah, you're gonna use that house then. You still got this push on there. Hmm. Yeah, this would be a nice, nice fight to have a quick look at in terms of. Where an arrow they are. They are winning these interbuilding fights, which, considering the PPSH and the Russians, if they can get through that left-hand column, mm. be up to that trench line. You're back where you started. Yeah. Be it with that middle point being contested as well. Oh, what a great rocket on that trench line! Lovely. That's an allied flare. I, th I think what happened. 
Sadly, but I think the best case scenario for BA, they get back to where they started, but they can't cross that empty road, giant field in front of them. Mm. That's where I'll start saying that sort of that's that German armor can there. really yeah, can definitely. really come in. They're stacking. Well, I think we've still got two tigers. They. Yeah, we've got two here. Mm. Hopefully, a third coming out soon. You know they can really they start throwing their weight around in terms of contesting for that middle point again. Do the ISs are. I haven't actually seen them yet. Uh, we could see one go right out to the east. Hmm. Oh, mate, no, they're being cleared up there in that trench line. Yeah. Not seen a tank over here, have we? Mm. And once again, Greyhound's just really knowing where to put their weight and knowing when to snub things out early instead of letting them get a foothold and then causing them problems later on. Yeah, it's, it's the fight, it's not just the Greyhound bullying them now, which it was for the first yeah. like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's now a. Uh, and the middle point's being contested. Mm, Greyhound's put a lot of weight there in the town, they are winning that, but. Still not much, they need a, a, a third avenue into this point from somewhere. Look at, looking at it, I think. Where's where where is all the BA way right now currently? Because I've seen a lot of red. Mm. It's across the line, it's mm. although it's quite static at the moment, considering what's being thrown at them. But I think they need that consistency to. Oh, it's on the west side as well. Yeah, yeah. to hold out. But they've still got these yeah. spots behind them. And that still needs to be dealt with. It's great to see this this fight this fight going on though, because so yeah. so often you can see teams just roll through certain building complexes because you kill one or two, you then knock an OP squad leaders, then frantically trying to get another one up, and you can get a lot of disjointed squad behaviour. So, so it's nice to see um, Broken Arrow doing quite well um, to to really stem what in this situation is a lot of being a quite of outnumbered in certain scenarios. Yeah, like, again, they're fighting back out the right-hand side. Yep. They're not giving up that compound. And it's in that active sector as well, so... Brown's always got to keep worried about that. Yeah, but the front line here is still pressing into Belgrade. Mm, they're getting it behind them. It's again a bit too much red weight. Well, it's nice to see um, Broken Arrow not putting their armor into that risky position that we saw earlier on, them really taking care of it, and then hopefully yeah. coming up to the hour mark now as we move into the next 10 minutes, we'll start seeing a bit of a con con yeah conservative armor push up the middle, maybe turn it into a bit of a risky push. Just lost the tiger there. Red column's been scary. Yeah, Especially where it's starting to do it. A hundred fuel in a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. okay. Back to stage one, sadly, I think. You can see the ground's moving up now as well. How they've got that mm -hmm. tanks killed. I'm just looking for their tanks. You see one on the one on left, left, yeah. Be good. It'd be great to see how the infantry move with this IS-1 trying to really pierce a hole. Obviously they've just taken down those two Tigers knowing that yeah. there's a bit of weakness in that line. Let's see how they... IS-1 and took both of that. Yeah. Sure? I wouldn't be surprised if they've got pre-prepared AT gun positions. That Katusha really... I think this is going to be the push, I think. Really trying to leverage that IS-1. with the infantry here. I think this is 
Yeah, the first time the Greyhounds have actually broken into the front of Belgorod here. Hmm. What was that? See so how many I can get pushed in. Just a truck. They've gone very far west. Hmm. Seems to be giving them that north entry into Belgorod. Yeah, they to deal with that one to get in. Yeah. yeah, infantry in the back line. I he, think Bretano might, might, might have a problem on their hands soon, especially yeah, if that yeah. IS-2 really wants to gamble, really gets that infantry pushing. Are Greyhounds pushing from the west still? Or is that wide flank disappeared? Seems like it's disappeared. Yeah, but BA are still keeping their... They've got a whole squad down that west side. Yeah, sure. At least they're rotating that back east. This is the danger of this sort of front push here. Linking up with those that have been in the back of the point. Yeah, and here we go. I've been paying attention. What's the final point for a BA if it is this? Uh, hey, behind hey, me. So. Oh, right. Not too bad, they can reset their front line, although I think they're going to try and put up a fight here. Yeah, they lost it, yeah. Do they, yeah, do, do they have a... they do have a Tiger coming out of Central. Just lost that OP there, it's not looking good. Greyhounds may try and do an airhead. Well then, in that bottom right-hand corner where they've got the weight. They could do it anywhere across that eastern line and probably defend it now. I don't think they're going to need an airhead there. You may be confident enough, yeah. Okay, so, at last point. Testing, yeah. arrow there. And defending. Where's that? Where's yeah, that they're there? throwing weight, they're throwing weight appropriately at the moment, and it's nice to see yeah, both RT guns really pinpointing where those positions are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that clearing that that yeah. Broken arrows RT's really doing quite well just to slow down that advance and hopefully broken Either way. bombing run. Broken arrow, that's cool. They're in the building. Just, uh... What is this witchcraft you speak of? Buildings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they've broken that east side of Belgorod. Have they, have they yeah. given up the full. Have they given up all the type of distillery? Or have they still got some present over there? Well, they've, they've got one. Yeah, they've given it up. Closed in, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, you, either way, then it's going to be. It's going to shift the front line. Slow somewhat. drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow drive down the front line. It's going to be a tough 15 minutes for Broken Arrow just in terms of pushing pushing the Greyhounds out. And to, I know, know, I know we said it, said it previously, but we they really need some concerted effort to really clear out that back line, make sure that they're secure at the back so that yeah. their tank they have freedom of movement, but they can also have that peace of mind that they can start throwing weight appropriately to firstly clear out St. Mary, because as much as it's out of sector, that control is needed, but yeah. then to mm -hmm. launch that assault onto distillery, as we see Abel on the map really just desperately trying to keep some sort of offensive OP going. You see newbie there though, he's dangerously close to three OPs on the mm. BA side, all held next to each other. And the reason why I don't do that is one guy can walk up there. And the OP's gone. Grenade, yeah. But he seems to even he's, know they're there. He's diverted south. Just a bit of a broken arrow for now. But this this wave of red now. See the uh, eastern continuum arriving. Oh, the flares looking, I haven't really seen the map. Are they, um, do they have cover, like, on that? They're not really using flares much. I've seen flares from both sides, but... I'm wondering if they think more of the weights, like, on either south, east, or north. Hmm. Seems to be they're not concentrating that much on the actual... Yeah, it seems, it seems like they're being closed in on know. Baker and Prep, really trying to, yeah. the concerted effort to push them out, but... I think, I think Greyhounds are, are all set up so that they can deal with what really is ever going to be thrown at them in terms of a concerted defensive push. And yeah, yeah. also for the Greyhounds, they've got that post core PPSH power. It's mm. a nightmare to deal with. 
So they're not killing you, they're making your screen shit go the miles on the side. Quite an offensive OP from, from Greyhounds just in the south. Right, the BA commanders have a lie or didn't get the OP there. Yeah. Lucky that is. It's not looking good for BA now. We've got numbers, I need to just eradicate these Greyhounds on the hard cap quickly. That south push though, that south they could save them if they can get them into that like the middle compound area. Oh, they're but they're not in the half at the moment. Need to reset their APs in a few seconds, they need to survive. I think Greyhounds will use that. Yeah, yeah, let's push here. You can push them on point reset. And shambles. Oh, and that's a great red wave pushing through that's now. What's the map looking like on wet and east side? Wide open on our left side. I don't know, Greyhounds are probably to anyone over there, no, not. They've got yeah, they have. Squad, so, uh, nobody back here yet. But yeah, um, unlike, unlike the previous two points, I feel like armor's really going to be needed for hay storage just with that open plane to that northwest going to cause complete and utter horrors for that infantry as there's unlike with Belgrade you've got those two channels of approach yeah there's only Eat. one now they're really, really going to need that armor to to yeah They're using that west front as well to clean up Belgrade from the west yeah it's PA dude have a squad lead up there still but long I don't think It's gonna be a slow grind, house mm. to house. Yeah. And at what point do they leave artillery range? It's about here, I think. So. Yeah, it's, it's gonna say that like, they're still gonna be peppered until until that point, and although just misranging from the artillery can't can't leave. But... That's the Greyhound artillery just hitting their range. Oh, That's where the garrison is. Have you seen many satchels? I haven't actually been paying too much attention to that. In terms of health and health area. Not really, certainly not on the hard caps. There may have been one or two greyhounds on Belgorod at one point, but... People are sometimes surprised how effective it is in terms of clearing. When you beat satchels and houses, it's a nightmare to deal with. Oh, that's a lovely, lovely gunfight that's going on just there. Cleared two. Oh, he's cleared three. That's really nice. Can he can he now leverage this? Yeah. Can he now leverage this? Push an OP, maybe clear more of that infantry. Allow his squad mates to really push up. Cement their position. Again, they got that on the left and the right flank. You got across an open bit of field. So that's a shame there. Did you realise he's upstairs though? He's killed four. How far can he go? Katusha landing on. Ground's putting a lot of weight on that east side as well. Yeah. I guess that west is a bit too open to keep pushing from. Yeah. We did, we did see this though, um, against the 82nd, a nice front line forming, even though they did lose that second point. Yeah, really, really well done to sort of bounce back, because it's quite easy from here just to sort of, not necessarily roll over, but to, to panic, feel like you need to do wonder plays, but no, really, really settled down. And although earlier when we were saying about their tank fight needing to really heavy uh, and we... make a good third push, I think. They're at them squad lead though, there. I'm sure we've got an OP now. But mm. yeah, we've got one right behind their lines. In the half up as well. Can you check the map, see if he's got an OP? No, he doesn't. Shame. Two up there, though. Just 
still holding out for now. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 oh poor man. Go on, go on stealth. Oh, oh no. Where are the OPs? It's in danger. Uh, the OP is oh, still up. Pascal needs to run away now. We're getting our OP up. Got to stay in fight. But yeah, this is probably what we're seeing that Greyhound are doing better than Broken Arrow in terms of when they see that threat coming through. They're very quick to not necessarily quash, uh, squash that threat. Just because it's swarming. The, it's sort of yeah, thing. but they're really That's throwing weight around. where they need to so that they can cause issues for those remaining remaining people. Going on the flank. Yeah, Getting behind the SDG. Nah, yeah, that OP's gonna be gone as well. Yeah, that's that. This is the grind on the front line. Mm. Right, how's looking to win this East, though? They can't avoid the AD on that west side. I think they're expecting Greyhounds to put pressure there, but. Well, we've been doing it yeah. at that line, sort of pushing out that middle and east side. Yeah, they once again, one, ignore that west front. Yeah, once again, just not really seeing where the threats are coming from and almost putting resources where they're not necessarily needed, as we've got yeah. a lot of men here not yeah, this risking running it. The field. You need yeah, exactly. Get the OPs up. These two the men to the middle bit. Exactly, these two central squads are doing what they can with the men that they've got. Obviously, mm -hmm. we're seeing Greyhound really put a lot of pressure on here. I think obviously maybe three, three to two squads just really pushing that centre and it's going to be tough. Do you have a time of thought the Kantusha's back up? I haven't actually been there. Should have recorded that. It's every 15, I think. Kintusha's yeah, I know, but uh, every 15. I've got a knee last year, though. One thing we have, haven't really seen, apart from that one play with the IS-1 earlier, is that the Greyhounds really throwing their armor weight to, to almost risk it to get get caps going or to cement infantry positions. It's being very much sitting in the back line, yeah. finding out that information on tanks, playing that slow game, which yeah we've seen previously when you start getting games earlier, for example, where we saw four 76s on the field, and when you have that control and you have that pressure, there's not much that you can't do. I think they're also they're wanting to let infantry be the fighting force, where look, we know Greyhounds are very strong infantry. Combat ability of like one-on-one -on -one type thing. Mm. Kind of want to put them in a situation where that's what's driving the push. So it's not send them into the town, into the buildings, mm. close quarters, because they know that you win them fights. You barely can make ground on the west side of Belgorod. Mm. They can get into that tower. And not yeah, much exactly. Down, down the middle. This, this is where you do start to see a bit more of that 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 plan come into sense. So obviously, middle's taking a beating here, but it's providing, it's absorbing that pressure so that they can mm. try and get a few squad leads, get in behind, link through through those buildings, and do pretty much what the Great Hunt's been doing to a Broken Arrow game, which is just sit in that back line, cause problems, start getting pressure, so that. Greyhounds really have to think where do they want to throw their weight and... Well, it seems like... I don't think Greyhounds... Greyhound Greyhounds aren't team the ones in the push right now, and then just... Oh, draw them out and there's an opportunity to grasp it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it would be good to see how many... how many Tigers Greyhound... Uh, Broken Arrow are sitting on. Sadly, losing those two Tigers pretty early on had meant that they've... they've been in a fuel deficit for quite some time, but... Um, yeah, can we check the Tigers? Yeah, I got one, uh, one, one, one coming out of left, left, yeah. Oh, Greyhounds had a lot of weight here a minute ago. I don't know where it's. Uh... They're shifting it somewhere, which is a bit worrying for BA. Yeah. Oh, you know what? But then BA making the ground on that left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's oh, that wow, center, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh... Instant shifts to weight, you see. 
I don't, I don't think BA have realised yet. They're not, they're not pushing forward from that middle. They're still holding the houses rather than... What? How would they know? There's no flag or anything there, no indications mm. that they've got a whole squad 50 metres away from Arca. Yeah, you also seem to make a push from the west of the Algorod as well. Clean. This is this is where you can really be caught out. You're you're really struggling to to hold that front line in terms of if you've thrown resource here there. But when yeah, when you're oh, not watching that angle yeah. and people are able just to walk into that hard cap is when situations really start to turn against you. And we're not seeing any MG cover that's really covering this push. And yeah, that Katusha now. Yeah, oh. tank pushing in. Oh, I think the trees got to get an OP on there. Yeah. Possibly in their heads. Although they have they have started capping that. Well then, what uh, great they'll do then, they can bring the infantry down with that east side, but uh, they're going to extend it back into the, the defensive point. There's a lot of infantry here east for the Greyhounds that can move in now. Yeah, yeah a lot of, lot of soft cap coming in, although... <laughs> yeah, no need, yeah, no reinforce just yet for Broken Arrow in terms of needing people in the hard cap, but yeah, that's got to be a priority for them. Whether that's smoke, whether that's RC covering their, their push, they need to get back into that hard cap to re-secure the point. Oh, it's just planted itself in the hard cap. Yeah. I think this could be... They are losing infantry oh. though, this could this could be a, an IS-1 going down. Do we have an OP though in that hard cap? Oh yeah, look at that. The swim, the swim doing a great job in terms of identifying where that yeah. issue was coming from, clearing that OP and then I this it this IS one's gonna do do some work in terms of clearing out some of the broken arrow but if it's think, not yeah, there yeah. BA should clear that. And that Lux providing that. a load of covering fire in terms of probably taking out tracks. Where's that tiger from earlier? Is that from other if you did the line of luck the one that was having to find its IS. Well they lost that tiger. That's probably what pulled them to attack the point then, I'm guessing. Yeah, they lost mm. their infantry support, but they've not been punished for it yet. Might be worth... I know there's a, a, quite a big munitions investment there, but throwing a, throwing a precision strike out just to clear that problem yeah. out. Because, yeah, here they've got... Yeah, there's, a, there's still a good bit of weight in, in the hard cap. You can get some more men. In and well, killing. Mm -hmm. Sky's the limit for Broken Arrow here. Is that a sour uh, recon? That is a the, old, uh, <laughs> the old milk van. And off he goes. How's that? How's that IS one doing on the hard cap? Is he has fallen yet? Still, still there, is he? Really needs to go. He? He's lost the crew member. Be fair. Like, okay, you've got the question. He's 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 been there. He's been there for four, four minutes now. Three minutes. Yeah, look what he's allowing Greyhound to be on the front line. Yeah, he's eighty. Eighty guns on the hill, just uh, just west of Verma. I think it's gonna be a slow squeeze until mm. the game. I think later on. That's another IS. Three yeah. ISs here now. He's blocking that behind the injured ISs. Yeah, saying that this could go all all pear shapes and there's there's the milkman once again. <laughs> Really concerted effort. Yeah, there's not much weight in the hard cap of the can by the tanks. Yeah, That's very okay. really quite field. Are they going to push this now, Greyhounds? They've got to consolidate this armor hold. Mm. We don't even need to push too much the infantry, just hold the infantry at bay and let them get near them tanks. We were saying it earlier, weren't we, in terms of armor is going to be the key to taking taking the final point and getting that 5 0 for, for Greyhounds if it does come up. 
come across, but there's still some fighting, Broken Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. Because the open fields can be very Oh, well that's shooting. a great <laughs> rocket. <laughs> oh, that's karma. <laughs> that's a little 2 1 2, I like that. Yeah, they're so good at this front line upgrade, the Broken Arrow. Mm. It's, it's been nice to see they've been very hard to dislodge off the points. They're very good at full committing, it seems, to defence. Like when you. When they need to come back, they do. It's just. Did they have the issue of the whole identifying where actually where it needs to be, I think, to start, especially? Surprised to see not the no precision strike coming in on that defensive point just to. I'm surprised no air. Let's fill that line. Like Especially you've got three tanks and a half cap. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's what's good. keeping it's what's keeping this cap going and well. well it's one of the points as well that it's surrounded by walls, got three tanks there, drop an airhead in the middle. Yeah, it's, it's it's a wonder how how the milkman's still still going, but when you using the uh big clipping the barrier isn't it, so we can't get two yeah, from Yeah. You move out the way? Yes, oh, oh that's wow, it's really good. Really Really good. If there was ever a, there was ever a scenario where they defend this, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. Just a recon, though, sadly. Two should come in from Greyhounds. I don't think BA yeah, can get in the hard cap there. Yeah. Uh, no, that might be it. I think that is game over. Got a good fight though. Yeah, yeah no. Really, really strong fight from, from both teams. On a map that we fight, yeah. Map we don't see that often, great to see it in the seasonal. Yeah, very much proving it's not impossible to win a Soviet. Well played both teams. It's a very good game. Broken Arrow doing very well to hold out there for 53 minutes, but uh yeah, Greyhounds march on. What do you guys think then? Earned victory? Definitely. That was it. It felt from the 10 minutes in, it was like a slow push. They knew what they were doing in terms of flanking as well. Very good flanking on the dog rub. They were constantly behind them. Then it was a yeah. case of BA also had to shift away from the front line to do it there behind. And then it led them wide open to just a frontal push. I think that happened twice. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there's obviously that the tank game went probably not not in favour of Broken Arrow just in terms of we saw two tigers going down in the space of what was it 30, 40 seconds when really in that in this sort of map and especially with the point layout you really need that armor to to clump up and do a concerted push and when they lost that yeah it's a, it's always an uphill battle really and from that they were 1,200 fuel down with um, yeah big hill to climb but yeah they didn't give up and they really put up quite a fight especially down that center and keeping that front line strong good yeah. fight for both teams then eh? yeah it was it was good to see broken arrow so good in defense but uh yeah, it gets a hard fight it's always going to be a hard fight for them mm, no for sure yeah unfortunately it wasn't to be for them today well that's all from us thank you for joining us again uh, we look forward to next week of the seasonal uh, i've been eats while playing with milk and sasquatch toodle pipsky